If you want to bite my camera, you stop paying rent. Oh, Atlas! Okay, no rent! Hello everyone, welcome. I hope you're having a fantastic day. If you're not, drink some water because it's not good to be sad and dehydrated. Just over a week ago now, I transitioned to have a plant-based diet and this wasn't for any particular reason. It wasn't for a video, it wasn't out of anything more than mild curiosity and sheer boredom. So the transition to being plant-based wasn't really a big deal for me because I, in my everyday life, ate near enough a plant-based diet anyway. I don't drink dairy milk and I consume meat maybe once or twice a month. And even then it's nearly always chicken because Cows are cute, man. Not to say that chickens aren't cute either. Shout out my chickens. But that's why this video is a bit different because typically when I do these kinds of videos, I film on day one and give you updates throughout the week. But in this case, I've already been doing it for a week and I'm just gonna take you on a typical day. And the reason I've decided to make a video on this despite not filming at all for the first week is because I found it really interesting. I've learned a lot about the benefits and potential negatives of being plant-based. I've learned a lot about how it's affected me as an individual and I thought it would be nice to make a video and share that information and my experiences with you. Surely there's enough of you that are curious about it that want to know more. <laughs> and you know, in the spirit of Pride Month, being curious is okay. So what is a plant-based diet and why am I saying plant-based and not vegan? Surely they're the same. The definition of a plant-based diet is a diet consisting mostly or entirely of plant-based foods. Plant-based foods are foods derived from plants with no animal source foods or artificial ingredients. While a plant-based diet avoids or has limited animal products, it is not necessarily vegan. A plant-based diet is only concerned with the food, whilst veganism is more of a complete lifestyle change than just a food change. A vegan diet means that you don't consume any animal products at all, with some vegans not even consuming honey. But they also tend not to consume any animal products in other forms, in terms of clothing, leather shoes, as well as makeup and skincare that contain animal products. Another key difference between plant-based and veganism is that to be plant-based diet, you don't actually have to completely stay away from animal products. As a result, you could still drink dairy occasionally and still be plant-based. And although the definition does suggest that you can still eat meat and be considered plant-based, it is quite unusual for someone to do that. Generally, most people who adopt a plant-based diet tend to be vegetarian or pescatarian. I'm gonna go into the benefits, the pros and cons of being plant-based a bit later on in the video because I don't wanna overwhelm you straight off the bat, but I do recommend you do your own research and always consult with a doctor or a nutritionist if you are thinking about going over a complete diet overhaul, especially if you have a pre-existing health condition. But before we get into it, it's time to consult our favorite 90 degree angle. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Integration Corner Sleepover Edition. I hope you've all brought with you your favorite pair of pajamas and uh, a hearty midnight snack because today we're gonna be gossiping. You may be wondering, but Eleanor, what is it that we're gossiping about? And that is where HelloFresh comes in. HelloFresh is a meal kit service that provides pre-measured ingredients from hand-selected recipes directly to your door. Every week you get to pick from a massive variety of recipes so you can choose exactly what it is you fancy to eat, which takes all of the stress out of cooking. You can literally just choose what you fancy, it arrives pre-measured, and you can literally have dinner on the table within 30 minutes. And even sometimes 20, because they offer quick and easy options too. I don't know if it's just me, but I find that cooking can be a bit of a chore sometimes. <laughs> and because I find it annoying and tedious, I end up just making the same things over and over again that I know are easy options. And that in turn makes cooking more tedious. But thank God, because HelloFresh really saved the day. Because HelloFresh uses pre-portioned ingredients, it means that you save loads of time on the prepping, but you also end up saving food from being wasted. It means I'm eating all of it, it's it's going to the gains. Another thing I really love about HelloFresh is just how user-friendly they are. You can change your delivery days, your food preferences, or even skip a week at the click of a button. And as if it couldn't get any better, I know you're thinking, wow, this is, this is pretty stellar. You know, how can we top it all off? Well, I'm about to 
to top it. HelloFresh donated over 4 million meals to charity in 2020, and they're continuing to step up their food donations amongst the crisis that we've been going through for the last year. You guys know that on this channel, I don't recommend products or, or services that I myself wouldn't use. And that's why I think it's really important to tell you that <laughs> I've been ordering HelloFresh out of my own pocket for several weeks now. <laughs> I've been using this. It's pretty much the only reason I'm getting my five a day. <laughs> I cannot lie. I'm obsessed. I love them. So if you would like to try HelloFresh for yourself, go to HelloFresh.com and use my code LBAT14 to get 14 free meals, including free shipping. Sign up. Sign that bad boy up. <laughs> Back to the video. Good morning. I've just woken up. I've just done my skincare routine. So every morning before I have my breakfast, I get up, I drink pretty much a whole one of these. I have my coffee. And I sit down and I do my kind of like to-do list slash gratitude journal. If it starts shaking, it's because Atlas is now on the cat tree and the, the camera's balanced on the cat tree. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to sit here? I think Atlas wants his space back. <laughs> my mouth just doesn't work in the morning. I just can't. I mentioned it in the last video, but I really just struggle to like swallow in the morning. I think this is part of the reason I don't eat my breakfast as soon as I wake up because I just like <laughs> my mouth just doesn't work <laughs> okay I'm done with my my little journal in for the day I have quite a lengthy to-do list but it's all like easy stuff lots of small things that can be done quite quickly that just make the to-do list look like a lot bigger than it is I'm excited I feel really positive today and that's something that I've noticed a lot since swapping just for like the last week or so on where even are you? I do feel like I have a bit more energy. And I know a lot of that is also because I've been doing it in tandem with having cold showers every now and then, which I just made a whole video on it. That's really kind of changed the way I see showers. And it kind of helped to regulate my sleep a lot more, which has given me more energy. I just feel less groggy a lot of the time. And I do feel that eating plant-based has lifted some of the mental fog that I get, particularly in the mornings where I feel really like blur. I do want to quickly say that obviously plant-based is not for everyone and you know, everyone's body needs different things. So I've gone 100% plant-based for the time being, but I might start incorporating fish back into my diet because I do really like salmon and I just find that when I eat salmon and stuff like that, it makes me feel good. But for right now, I'm feeling pretty good doing plant-based, so I might just continue with that for the foreseeable future until I, you know, get a really intense salmon craving and then, <laughs> then we'll have to see. Right, it's breakfast time. Now for breakfast, most mornings I tend to make porridge and this is because I'm a big lover of porridge. If you've been following my channel for a long time, you'll know. Porridge is one of my favorite breakfasts ever and when you have it with oat milk or almond milk, it is a perfect plant-based nutrition. I always have my porridge with honey and peanut butter. It's like the best combo you can possibly have. It's just a really hearty, fulfilling breakfast. I, whenever I have porridge, I feel like I'm ready to get on with the day. You can make it in the microwave as well. It's just, I don't own a microwave. After breakfast, you guys know, I either like to do a workout or just head straight on into my work. Today was a work day, so I just got on with my to-do list. <laughs> hello, hello. So I have just spent the last few hours completely decluttering my wardrobe. I've kind of got into the habit of doing this like once every month, once every couple of months, where I just go through everything I own, like in my wardrobe, and if I haven't worn it and haven't even thought about it, it just goes to a charity shop or it goes with Depop. Because I just realized you get to a point in life where you've accrued so much stuff and it's just ridiculous and you don't even appreciate the things that you do have because you just have too much of it. So I've just done that to my wardrobe, which is great, which means there'll be a bunch of stuff on my Depop if you're interested. I am feeling a little bit hungry now, so it's time for a little snack before lunch. This is like my favorite part of the day because I've got a, an addiction to this one specific food and I'm going to show you now. So these are deliciously Ella salted caramel cups and I swear they are just, they're something else. At first when you eat them they can be like a little bit dry tasting but after you get over that they're incredible. Something that's really interesting about like vegan food or like plant-based food is that a lot of people think that just because it's vegan, it's healthy and you don't have to consider, you know, the sugar intake or the fat intake of your foods. And obviously, generally speaking, it is easier to eat healthier as a vegan or plant-based because the majority of your calories are coming from vegetables and legumes whereas a lot of people potentially would have like a big meat 
based dish and maybe forget about the vegetables in that. However, it's not to imply at all that there are unhealthy foods, so to speak, in veganism or in plant-based foods. You can be a vegan and exclusively eat vegan sweets and you're still gonna be unhealthy. Like, that's not, <laughs> it's not necessarily good for you. You're not really getting a wide variety of, <laughs> of nutrients there. And I don't wanna really sit here and perpetuate the narrative that, you know, veganism or plant-based is inherently healthier because there are still choices that you can make within veganism, like vegan cakes, vegan sweets, that have the same impact on you as if you d just ate cake that wasn't vegan. I personally don't ever believe that we should restrict ourselves. I think if your body's craving something, you should eat it. I personally just pay attention to the portion sizes of what it is that I'm eating. I'm not a nutritionist. That's just what I do. That's just what works for me. And that's kind of leads us on to these. So these are plant-based. These are made of gluten-free oats, date syrup, coconut oil, dark chocolate, which is made up of cacao nibs, coconut sugar, cacao butter, roasted almond butter, coconut sugar, cacao powder, maple syrup, and salt. Obviously, there is a lot of sugar in this. It is not inherently healthier just because it's vegan, but it is made from more natural ingredients in terms of the fact that it's all plant-based. This cacao is a superfood. Dates are really good for you. They're great for your digestion. There is still an awful lot of sugar in this. Oh, look how good it is. Deliciously Ella, if you're watching this, this is my second box of like 12 of these. So please hook a girl up because this is my largest grocery expense. <laughs> Something that is interesting to note is that since starting this plant-based diet, I have not been snacking nearly as much, which might not sound like a huge thing, but I have and thought I always would be a grazer. I like to eat lots of things in small quantities throughout the day. I've never really been a big meals person. I never really thought that would change until I noticed a couple of days ago that whilst eating a plant-based diet, I wasn't actually snacking as much. And it took me a while to realize why this might be, and it's probably really obvious to you guys, but I think a big part of it is because I was now making a conscious effort to eat a lot of fruits or vegetables at lunchtime. And that's something that I've never really done before. Okay, I finished a lot of the work that I needed to do, so it's now time for lunch. I'm gonna show you some goodness. Okay, so I'm just heating up the cauliflower, sweet potato and lentil Dal, I think it is. Very excited. This is from HelloFresh and it's made with coconut milk. It's delicious. I had it the other day for dinner. Essentially, at the moment, Jean is back home with his family. So I've been on my own for a while and HelloFresh meals are for two. So when I make a dinner with HelloFresh, I then eat the leftovers for lunch. So this is what I'm doing today and I'm very excited about it. It means I can have like a really nutritious lunch without any extra effort. I just have to heat it up, which is so much better for me because I'm really lazy. And I know HelloFresh only sponsored a part of this video, but genuinely having HelloFresh and being able to eat the leftovers the next day for lunch has really helped with this whole thing. Dun, da, da, dun. We're going back to the office because this is where I find that I enjoy most of my lunch meals. <laughs> this is such a delicious and nutritious meal and I always feel so good after eating lots of vegetables for lunch which is something I never used to do before. I'm having this with a vegan wholemeal pita bread just because I felt like I wanted a bit more carbs. Bone apple teeth. No. <laughs> I have been eating proper lunches now for a while and it's really improved my energy. And this might sound really stupid because I'm sure a lot of you already do this, but for me, this was a huge change. Like it's not something that I've ever done before because I didn't think I enjoyed it. I am very quickly gonna go over some of the main benefits that I've read about in terms of having a plant-based diet and the good that it can do for you. I'm also gonna go over some of the potential negatives. I'm only gonna do so briefly because I don't wanna just bombard you with loads of information. Now, the first positive is pretty obvious and it's something that I've already mentioned multiple times in this video, but it's really not hard to understand how eating plant-based could improve your health. When you are making a conscious effort to make up the majority of your calories from plant-based foods, you are naturally consuming more helpful nutrients for your body. You're consuming more vegetables, more legumes. For example, instead of eating Doritos, you might now be eating a fruit salad. And whilst fruit salads do still have quite high sugar content, they have a lot more vitamins in than Doritos. This is why plant-based diets tend to be richer in certain nutrients like fiber and antioxidants. There have been several studies that have suggested that people with plant-based or vegan diets generally have lower BMIs than those who don't. And there have also been several randomized and controlled lab studies that have found that veganism is actually better for weight loss compared to other forms of diet. Now I'm not saying that most people go vegan for the weight loss or the BMI. In fact, there are some people who've gone vegan and have gained weight. There have also been several studies that have found that 
A plant-based or vegan diet might have real benefits for those suffering with type 2 diabetes. And this is because a lot of studies have found that vegans have generally a lower blood sugar level and higher insulin sensitivity. And the combination of these two things may help to reduce the symptoms of type 2 diabetes or help to lower the risk of developing it. Not only that, but vegan or plant-based diets have been linked to lower cholesterol and a lower risk of heart disease. But whilst this all does sound great, there are some risks you run when you become vegan or plant-based. The first one was one I mentioned at the beginning of this video, that any massive upheaval of what you're already eating can have very negative impacts on your body. For example, if you are eating meat every day and you suddenly go cold turkey and go to a fully vegan diet, you might have some real issues with your body, with your digestion. Um, <laughs> so maybe don't do that. Another key issue that tends to impact people who just started a plant-based diet or a vegan diet is that they don't end up consuming enough calories and this is because they're not consuming the right kinds of foods or they don't really know the kind of foods that they should be eating. This can result in malnourishment in some cases and also dramatic weight loss. Now these aren't things that are good or healthy for your body so please make sure if you are thinking about going vegan or plant-based you do your research and come up with meal plans and make sure that you are looking for the right sources of food and nutrients for your body. Now in terms of nourishment, because it is quite difficult to get certain vitamins and or minerals from being plant-based or vegan, often it is just considered much better practice to just take supplements for the things that you are likely to be lacking in. There are seven key supplements that are recommended to take if you are going to embark on a fully vegan diet and those supplements are vitamin B12, vitamin D, long chain omega-3s, iron, calcium, zinc and iodine. After lunch, I decided to head back to work and just do a bit of editing, a thumbnail adjustment, you know how it is. And whilst I was doing that, I decided to have a sesame snap, which is kind of like just sesame seeds with, I think it's maple syrup. I don't know. Either way, it's, it's sesame seeds and sugar in a snappy little rectangle. Once I had finished up my work, it was time for dinner and I had a vagatsu from Wagon Mama's for dinner yesterday and because the portion sizes are a little bit too big, I tend to eat it again for dinner the next day. I just warm it up. So that was my plan. Vagatsu is delicious by the way. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend you give it a go. It's made of Satan which I'm pretty sure I'm saying wrong. And it's really nice, it's vegan, it's delicious. It does just taste like regular katsu curry. <laughs> After dinner, I had a bit of vegan chocolate. This is my favorite vegan chocolate at the moment. I'm a bit obsessed with it, but something that is worth noting is that it is expensive. This tiny little bar costs three pounds. And when you consider the non-vegan alternatives that you can get for that money, you can buy like three massive sharing bags of Cadbury's chocolate. It is, it is quite hard to justify. And that kind of brings me on to another element of this plant-based slash veganism debate. And that is that it is expensive to be a vegan in a lot of cases, and it is expensive to go plant-based. Fresh fruit and vegetables can be incredibly expensive and inaccessible for a lot of people. And that is a big issue. If you are environmentally conscious or you wanna go vegan for health reasons, but you are on a tighter monetary budget than others, it's not really viable. And then you have to consider that vegan chocolate, vegan sweets, vegan cakes tend to be a lot more expensive than their non-vegan alternatives. This makes veganism as a lifestyle or plant-based as a diet kind of inaccessible to a lot of people. And I do think it is important to acknowledge that there is an element of privilege in being able to change your diet to this. One that I am obviously benefiting from currently given this video and given the fact that I could make that change. There is a lot of privilege in veganism. And I think that's something that a lot of people forget when they say, oh, why are you eating meat? It's bad for the environment or it's bad for your body or why are you eating ready meals? Why are you eating pizza? Blah, 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 blah. Not everyone can be afforded the same luxuries in terms of fresh fruits and vegetables as you can, even if they wanted to. So I think it's really important just, just to round off this video, just to say, you know, don't comment on other people's diets. Don't comment on other people's health. They are probably doing the best that they can in the situation that they can be in. So you know, don't don't ever shame someone for what they're eating. That should go without saying because you have no idea what their situation is, whether it be in terms of their health or whether it be in terms of, you know, what they can afford to eat. Because, you know, just because you can afford to do something 
doesn't mean the people around you can. But yeah, that rounds off this very unusual video format for me. I'm sorry that it wasn't really quite the, the fun experiment vibes that I usually have when I do these kind of challenges, but because this was something that I didn't start as a video, it didn't really go that way. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. It's a free world, you do you boo. Do let me know in the comments down below if you are vegan, if you are plant-based, your experiences with it, or if you would never go near it with a barge pole. <laughs> I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. I genuinely sit and read pretty much every single one of my comments so i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and i will see you next week with another video kisses to your mother